U.S. CEO Francis D'Souza. Welcome. Well, thanks, guys, and Francis, thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So let's talk about those earnings that you had last week that have driven your stock so much. Uh, analysts really responding pretty positively. And one of the things they focused on is that your consumables, these uh, these products that are used during the genome sequencing process, uh, were up quite a bit. But they noted that um, China may have been stocking up ahead of some tariff concerns. Can you tell us about the importance of China to your business and whether there are concerns about uh, the tariffs? Sure. China is emerging as uh, one of the important markets for genomics around the world. And really in the last few years, it's emerged uh, as a big genomics market. And for Luna, it represents our second largest genomics market. So behind the United States, the United States is still uh, by a comfortable lead the biggest market we have, but China has emerged. Um, and what's driving the demand in China is really the demand from uh, patients and consumers. So we're seeing strong demand uh, for researchers that are working in cancer research, uh, so a lot of cancer testing, and also in reproductive health. So the non-invasive prenatal test has seen a big uptick in China for, for couples that are going through pregnancy. And so the, the demand for consumables for us has been driven by the demand from consumers as well as the strength of our technology position in the market. What's, how tariffs have played out in the last quarter that we called out was it caused uh, uh, some customers uh, to purchase ahead of what they thought tariffs was going to come in. And, and that's what we expect. We expect that most tariffs will be uh, a little bit of a move in orders between one quarter and the next. But the fundamental demand from China is still going to be driven by you know, researchers, doctors, patients, uh, and is going to be driven by the strength of our technology. How would you compare the level of investment and the growth that you're seeing from China versus from the United States? Of course, there have been huge projects going on here in the U.S., like the Precision Medicine Initiative, where you know, the government, through different projects, wants to sequence a million Americans. Um, is there a push? Is it still as strong under this administration, or do you see growth really coming from outside the U.S. a lot more? Sure. If you look at you know, where the demand is coming from around the world, uh, and you look at our numbers last quarter, but frankly, uh, even over the last few periods, you'll see that the, the demand has been very broad-based. So last quarter, the United States revenue from the U.S. was from the Americas was up 19 percent, and then revenue from Europe was up over 30 percent. Revenue from Asia Pacific and Japan was also up over 30 percent, and then revenue from China was up 42 percent. So you're really seeing strong double-digit growth across the regions, and and similar profile in terms of what's driving the growth. So you're seeing research across each of those markets be strong. You're seeing clinical applications like oncology, uh, like reproductive health also be strong. One of the stories with your stock, like, like any new technology, the first products that come out, they're really expensive, right? And then you make more and more and it gets cheaper and cheaper. So your products are getting cheaper. Normally that would be bad, right? Nobody likes the, the cost going down, except that means many more companies, industries, whatever you want to call it, can buy your product. How low can the price go and how pervasive can your, your genome testing equipment get? I mean, could it get to the point where a Walgreens has it? What, what's your view of where this all goes? You know, that's a, a really important lens by which to view the market. Because if you look at the first human genome done in about 2003 when the results were published, it cost over a billion dollars to do the first human genome. Now clearly that doesn't scale. And one of the things that we have been about at Illumina from the very beginning has been to democratize access to genomics. We want to make it available to more people around the world. And so a lot of the innovation we do, and frankly we spend 18% of our, our revenue on innovation, has been around to drive the cost of sequencing down, make it simpler to use, so it's available to more people around the world. And so we've been among the leaders in driving that cost of sequencing down from a billion dollars to a million dollars to tens of thousands of dollars. And and then in 2014, we announced a $1,000 genome. And then in 2017, I talked about the fact that we were on a path to get to a $100 genome. Now, as you point out, ordinarily, when people see their, their prices going down, you know, companies wonder about, well, will their revenue grow? And we deeply believe in the elasticity of this market, and that's what driven, has given, driven our growth so far. And every time we've taken the price down, we've opened up vast new applications for genomics. And I still believe we're in the very early stages of the, the market in terms of what genomics can do for human health and disease. Which markets could benefit the most from this most quickly? Is the fragmented nature of the U.S. healthcare make it less susceptible to benefit early on than, say, in the U.K., where it's, A, a smaller market, but B, there's a centralized national health service and, and data collection can be done uh, on a national level. You know, there's definitely a, a sort of regional view on prices, and then there's an application view or a, uh, a, a market view of prices. So from a regional perspective, 
you know, certainly as you think about bringing the prices down, you are making uh, genomic testing available to more of the populations, even in developed countries, but much more so in developing countries. And so as we drive the prices down, you're opening up these developing countries that frankly will have as much utility from genomics as anybody else. And so I think the long-term regional play is around bringing genomics to the developing countries, and we are pushing towards that. From an application perspective, what we found is every time we bring prices down, we open up new applications. If you look at what's happened, for example, in consumer genomics and, and consumers going out and getting genomic tests to understand you know, their genealogy or their health traits, you know, that's a market that got fundamentally enabled by lower prices for genomic testing. And then if you look at the clinical markets today, the primary markets are, again, oncology and reproductive health. But if you think about markets like cardiovascular, diabetes, neurological conditions, those get opened up as we make genomics available to more people. Have you taken a DNA test? I, not a direct one through like an ancestry.com. Uh, there there is not a single things. DNA test I have ever seen that I didn't take. I have taken every single one <laughs> What's your available favorite? ancestry. Ancestry is my favorite. They process that. There you go. So you, you process my DNA. How Not me Francis. personally, but yes. <laughs> uh, we will have to leave it there. Thank you very much, Francis D'Souza, Meg Torell as ever. Thank you very much uh, for joining us.